Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to discuss inheritance for IGCSE biology. So first of all, I discuss some key concepts that people confuse about and then we apply those concepts in recent topical past papers with detailed explanations. Let's begin. Okay, so in this video, I did not include the definitions. If you want to know the definitions of the important biology terms, I have made a video about it and it's in the link. In this video, however, I have combined some important points, some points that people find confusing or they get confused about. So, what is a dominant allele? A dominant allele, remember, it's always expressed in the phenotype, whether the organism is homozygous or heterozygous. Remember, homozygous individuals have only one form of allele, while heterozygous individuals have both alleles of a gene or a trait. A dominant allele is always denoted by a capital letter. Alright, so here, this is an example that will explain this point. So, here we have um, a heterozygous uh, individual. We have a heterozygous individual that has the dominant allele, capital B. If you look at these, uh, these offsprings, whenever we do have a capital, it is going to be expressed. So, if capital B is brown fur, it is going to be uh, expressed. Um, this is a homozygous individual and it has dominant alleles. Whenever dominant allele is present, it's going to be expressed. So all of them would have brown fur if capital B represents brown. Now, a recessive allele, on the other hand, is only expressed in, in homozygous individuals. For example, here you can see um, these are homozygous and that's only when you can this can be expressed. Let's write this as maybe a small letter B could be white. Small letter B could be white. So if you can see um, only homozygous individuals express the recessive allele so only these two would be white in the other two individuals even though the recessive allele is present it's not going to be expressed um next what is pure breeding pure breeding is uh two identical homozygous individuals when they breed all the offsprings will have exact same genotype and phenotype so let's look at two examples here we have um homozygous individuals when you breed them you can see these are all 100 percent white that's their phenotype and their genotype is also 100% a uh, small letter BB so this is a recessive homozygous on the other hand we have a het we have heterozygous individuals if you notice um, their phenotype as well as their genotype is different uh, for a phenotype is 3 to 1 ratio between brown and white so we have 3 brown to 1 white why 3 because um, capital letter represents brown and all three of them have the dominant allele present for the genotype that's the ratio these are definitely not pure breeding now what is a test cross a test cross is a cross that is used to identify the unknown genotype for example if there's a cat that has black fur you can visibly see that it's black but you don't know whether this individual this cat is a homozygous or heterozygous so you're just supposed to cross it with a homozygous recessive, okay? Alright, so this is an example where capital W represents white and small letter W, the recessive one represents gray, okay? If the cat, for example, was homozygous, it would have both uh, dominant alleles for white and then we cross it with homozygous individuals. You will see all of the offsprings will have white color, okay? 100% white. But on the other hand, if the cat was heterozygous, that means it had both the alleles, you cross it with the uh, homozygous recessive, and you see you, you get a combination of offspring. Uh, it's going to be 50% uh, white and 50% gray. So this is a test cross to identify whether the individual was homozygous or heterozygous. Moving on. Okay, I think a lot of people confuse, or they do know the definition, but sometimes... A lot of people get confused by the exact differences between chromosome versus DNA versus gene and allele. So let's uh, go through it one by one. Okay. Whenever you see structures like these, these are chromosomes. Okay. A chromosome basically is made up of DNA. It has DNA and some other proteins as well, but it's mainly made up of DNA. Okay. This is present in the nucleus of cells. And in human beings, normal uh, diploid cells that means all the somatic cells other than the gametes have 23 pairs these are diploid cells for example if th this is one pair from the dad and the other one came from the mom and there are 23 pairs in total in haploid cells we don't have a pair we just have one okay now 
uh, what is a DNA? This is what a DNA looks like. It, is, it has a double helix structure and it has a particular sequence of bases. So you can see these, these red lines. These are bases, okay? On the other hand, green lines, these are also bases. They are arranged in a particular sequence. This is very important because this sequence changes one individual from another, one, one a species from another, and so on. So DNA is specific for every person. Um, between species is going to be very similar, but even between two human beings, there are slight differences, okay? Now, what is a gene? A gene is basically a length of DNA. For example, if this is your entire DNA, a small length of DNA represents the gene. The order of these bases is basically a code for an amino acid. And these amino acids are going to be arranged together by ribosomes in the cell cytoplasm. And they code for different proteins. For example, uh, for eye color, height, fur, gender, everything. It also codes for proteins including enzymes, membrane carriers, receptors, and neurotransmitter. Sequence of bases in the gene it determines the amino acid sequence to make a specific protein. One thing that you can remember is all the cells, all the uh, diploid cells in our body have the same DNA. But the only difference is that not all the genes are expressed in every cell. So based on the particular function of the cell, that only that gene will be expressed. For example, you don't need protease enzyme in your mouth, for example. So that is not going to be expressed in the mouth cells and so on. What is an allele? Allele is basically an alternative form of gene. Uh, the gene for eye color could be different for different people. It could be blue or green. Some people are homozygous. That means from both of the parents, they got the same color for eyes. And some people are heterozygous for a particular gene. That means they, they inherited different genes for, a, for eye color from both of their parents. So it could be capital B or B. These are alleles, okay? Capital B and small b are both alleles for eye color. Now the difference between meiosis and mitosis is very important. Make sure that you know the spelling and make sure that you don't confuse between both of them. Mitosis is a nuclear division and is used for growth, repairing of cells and all that. Meiosis, however, is reduction division and it is used to create gametes. Um, meiosis produces genetically different cells because it's a reduction division. The chromosome number are halved and we get a random combination of chromosomes of either uh, some from mom some from dad and the cells are different on the other hand the daughter cells produced by mitosis are exactly same they're genetically identical and the chromosome number is maintained that means in human beings will have diploid cells and they have 23 pairs mitosis happens all the time for growth and all that while meiosis only occurs during a production of gametes okay codominance is when both alleles contribute to a phenotype if you have capital B and small letter B, and for example, capital B represents brown and small letter B represents white, if the dominant allele is present, the, the recessive allele has no effect on the phenotype, and this is going to be brown. However, there are some characteristics, for example, for blood type. Both of the alleles contribute to the phenotype. For example, if you have IA and you have IB, the blood group is not going to be blood group A or B, the blood group is going to be called as AB. Both of these alleles have an effect on the phenotype. Now, what is sex linkage characteristics? Basically, the gene responsible for a characteristic is located on the sex chromosome, which are, which are either X or Y chromosome. That means the disease will be more common in one gender than the other. One common example is red-green color blindness. Which description of a human gamete is correct? Always remember, gametes are always haploid cells. The rest of the cells are diploid. So it's going to be either C or D. And um, haploid cells have half the number of chromosomes. So it's going to be half of 46, which is 23. So 29 is C. Next, which statement about meiosis are correct? Uh, so does it produce genetically identical cells? No, it does not. Because there is uh, meiosis is a reduction division producing genetically different cells and it's involved in the production of gamete cells, correct? Uh, these cells are gamete cells. So the answer is C. A female parent, so we can write XX, who is heterozygous for red a green color blindness. Let's give the letter R to these traits. So capital R would be normal, while a small letter R would be affected, affected by the disease. 
so they are saying this is a heterozygous so it's, it's going to have capital r and small r it um has a female child with a red green colorblind male parent what is the chance of female child being colorblind okay so the dad is xy and it, he is affected so xr let's make a punit square okay so these are the results uh, they are asking what is the chance of the female child being colorblind so the female child does not have the y chromosome so it's going to be uh, one of them if you see this child is colorblind so out of these two girls there is one in two chance to be colorblind so the chance is 50 percent the answer is c next a pure breeding plant remember pure breeding is going to be homozygous with smooth stems was crossed with a heterozygous plant with hairy stems what will be the ratio of hairy to smooth stems in the resulting plant? Okay, so let's make another punit square. Okay, let's give the letter S. How do we know whether smooth stems is going to be dominant or recessive? Let's look at the heterozygous plants. A heterozygous plant have both the alleles, capital S and small letter S. A dominant allele always shows up in the heterozygous plant. So we can say capital S is going to be hairy, while small letter S is going to be smooth. So a pure breeding plant with smooth stems is going to be small letter S S. Let's breed it. So we have um two hairy and we have two smooth. So this can be written as one to one between hairy and smooth. The answer is going to be A. Okay, next, which statement about gene mutation is correct? A is mutation a change in the amino acid sequence of DNA? Um no, mutation is basically the change in the basis of a uh, base sequence of DNA. And that could eventually lead to a change in amino acid, but it's not directly it. Uh, mutations are a source of genetic variation. That's correct. Mutation is the primary source of genetic variation because it provides us with new alleles that have different, different DNA sequence. Next, mutation are caused by random mating. Um, no, mutation is not caused by random mating. Random mating basically contributes to the div diversity because different alleles are going to be combined in different combinations. For example, a green eye and curly hair and blue eye with straight hair like new combinations are formed than that of parents so that is not mutation mutations happen during random fertilization no mutation does not happen during random fertilization random fertilization basically creates new com uh, different combinations of alleles so d is also wrong next why do different cells in human body produce different proteins a alleles can be dominant or recessive that is correct alleles can either be dominant or recessive but that does not explain why different cells produce different proteins next only particular genes are expressed that's correct why because not all genes are active in every cell for example um the the gene for hair color is not active in eyes for example cells have different genes um that's not right because cells have all the cells have same DNA and um, the DNA carries the, the code for all the genes of our body. The sequence of uh, bases in DNA varies between different cells. That's also wrong. The, sequence, the DNA is exactly the same. So 31 is B. Now, which graph shows the mean mass of DNA per cell before and after, before, during and after mitosis? Okay, so what happens in mitosis? Mitosis is a nuclear division in which the daughter cells produced have the exact same number of chromosomes as the parent cell. But what happens is uh, exactly right before um, mitosis occurs, there is an exact replication of chromosomes. So the chrom chromosomes number double. So you can see in option A and B, there is um, from number four, we went to eight. There is an increase in the number of chromosomes. On the other hand, C and D, uh, it's reducing, so it's not going to be that. Okay, so in A and B, we, we have an exact replication and the mass doubles. But what about after that? After that, when the cell divides, the copies of chromosomes separate and the daughter cells uh, have the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell. Therefore, if we started by 4, we need to have 4 in the final uh, cells as well. And that is explained in B. In A, the uh, mass reduced even more than the parent cell. So it's not going to be A. It's B. Then, which diagram shows the correct inheritance of sex chromosomes? Remember, parent, um, the uh, mother always have XX, whereas father has XY chromosomes. So if you can see, parent one has XY, XY, that's not correct. Pa uh, C is also wrong. It would either be uh, B or D because these are XX and XY here as well. Now, let's see if the cross is correct. So XX, XY. X, 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 Y, that is correct. 
Uh, moving on. Which statement about the production of protein are correct? Uh, let's look at these uh, statements. The sequence of bases in the gene determines the amino acid sequence used to make a protein. That's correct. So we have a DNA. In the DNA, we have we have different bases, and a, a small a length of this base is a gene. So the the sequence of base in that gene determines the amino acid sequence used to make a protein. So this codes for the amino acid. These amino acids are used to make a protein. So one is correct. Therefore, it's going to be option A or B. We can eliminate C and D. So in number two, the mRNA molecules are made in the nucleus and they remain there. Basically, the mRNA molecules are made in the nucleus, but they move out to the cytoplasm of the cell to, to continue the process. So it's not two, therefore it's going to be three. The ribosomes assemble amino acids together to make a protein. That's correct. Um, ribosome is a structure and it is used to assemble uh, the amino acids together to make the protein so it's going to be b next in mice the allele for brown fur is dominant to the allele for white fur the diagram shows the inheritance of fur color in a family of mice which two individuals are heterozygous for fur color in order to solve this question there is a very easy way to do this and a very quick way which individuals are heterozygous for a fur color? That means they have uh, both the dominant allele and the recessive allele, so both brown and white. Okay, remember for dominant allele, it's always going to be expressed in the phenotype, whether it's homozygous or heterozygous. So let's see which one of these are, uh, which one of these has the dominant allele? It's going to be all of them that are colored, okay? So, so it's not going to be 1, 7, 10, 11, or 12. And if you look at the options, A has one, this one. So it's not going to be A. What about B? It has two and eight, that could be. Three has six and seven, but it has seven. Seven cannot be heterozygous. So it's not this. And finally, seven and ten, again, seven cannot be. So it's only going to be B, two and eight.